That's right. We back. We back. Oh, let's talk about it. Before we get going, hit that subscribe button, y'all. Give me the 300. The goal is 1,000, but at least give me the 300. I'm at like what? 283 now? Let's keep it pushing. Um, as you see, it's just me today. It ain't a lot of, you know, I ain't had no guests. Because of the day, everybody's busy, you know, doing their Easter egg hunts and doing things with the family. And that's understood. But the show must go on. I mean, it's my podcast, so I have to be able to do it even if nobody's here, right? Right. So, I just wanted to come to you for a few minutes. It's not even going to be a long pod today, you know. But I'm going to just take my time real quick and go through a little quick topic. It's called The Company You Keep. You know, I was a little unsure about whether I was going to do this topic. It's like, man, who care about that? Who, You know, it's a cliche topic, you know, about birds of a feather flock together and all that good stuff. You know, and some are prone to disagree with that, but I'm going to address that too. But what I found and what I'm finding is the company you keep matters. It matters a lot. As you get older, the people that you choose to have around you as far as your your circle, that matters. And you absolutely have control over that. But I often keep running to issues, even with friends. Like I said, I had a couple of conversations on today that kind of confirmed that I should speak about this. Situations with friends that they're coming up against issues with other people, right? But I'm always one to get back to the root of it. Like, mine is what's going on now. The fact of the matter is a lot of times it's people they don't have to deal with. Or at least they can set boundaries around how they deal with them. No one is owed space in your life. And I hope it doesn't sound like an arrogant statement but when you really think about it, no one is owed space in your life. It can be earned. But understanding your own value, if you think you're golden, would you just, as the, as the Bible says, and I, even if I'm off context, I'm going to use the, the term, you know, cash your pearls to swine. Would you just toss yourself to just whatever? If you look at yourself as having value, you wouldn't put yourself out there to people that don't value you the same as you value yourself. But too often it seems like we do that because of maybe we were taught or shown that, okay, if I've known you for 20 years, then I always have to deal with you. Even if you're the most toxic, messed up person on earth. Because I went to kindergarten with you. Yeah, I said kindergarten. If I went to kindergarten with you, you my girl, you my boy. Like, it don't work like that, yo. I got people I've known since then that I don't talk to at all. It's not beef. It's just that as you grow, people take different paths in life. Even if you owe somebody money, that still don't mean they, they're owed. That's it. They're owed money. Not space. Not um, the right to just call you or obligate you to because they might be a drama-filled person. You're not obligated to that. You owe them money. You know. And even if they've helped you before, which is an honorable thing, and you do want to try to be, have some type of loyalty to people that are helpful. But if they've helped you in the past, like one or two times, they helped you and, and that was really the dynamic of the relationship. But now as years have gone along, if their agenda or lack thereof becomes detrimental to where you're headed, then it's okay to at least put some space in between. But too often, you're bumping heads with people you don't have to deal with. Or at least you don't, you're not utilizing the power in the situation that you could to say, okay, this is the boundary. This is how far I will let you go. So no, I'm not going to pick up every time you call. Because every time you call, it's never you calling to say, 
hey, how you doing? Or even to ask me what I'm working on. You know, or even to tell me what you're working on. It's always drama. It's always an issue. It's always frustration. It's always stress. And you come and dump that on a person. Or a person come and dump that on you. And you got to carry that around. On top of what you're dealing with too. They've gotten to release that on you. They feel better. Hadn't checked on your well-being at all. And now you got to carry around their energy. Plus, try to manage yours. Is that fair? No, it's not. But you have control over that because you don't have to allow that. You're not obligated to allow people to have that type of space in your life. Now, granted, even with myself, there are certain people, if, if they call me or text me, nine times out of ten, if I can, I'm going to pick up or I'm going to call them back in a reasonable time. Because I know that they're not just calling to dump. They may need to vent at the time, but I know if, even in other areas, if I need help also with something, they're there for that too. So it is some type of reciprocity there. Hold on, let me get a little drink of water. I'm, I'm a little parched. Like I said, this is not going to be like super long today. Just something that hopefully is beneficial to someone. Because if someone right now, you, you're in a situation or dealing with someone or different people or a group of people, and you're frustrated because there may be some contention between you and someone else because of their perspective of you their interpretation of something you did or said or their lack of seeing your value. And you may be bumping heads or even to a situation where you want to put hands on. But go back and think about it first. Is this person being around only just beneficial to them? Or does it have some type of benefit to me as well? Is there some, some type of Mutual friendship, mutuality. I don't know if that's a word, but I just used it. Some type of commonalities other than just, okay, we drink, we smoke, or whatever. We watch kickboxing, whatever it is. Commonalities. You can have commonalities with people and still not need them in your space. You know. Okay, another thing too. Who influences your decision making? When you when you have a situation, when you call your friends, you know, say, especially in business, I'm, I'm gonna go that route. Because sometimes in business, you have to bite your tongue sometimes more than you want to. Because sometimes people are trying to play you, whether in business or on the personal side. And you want to put them on blast. Sometimes you want to put hands and feet and elbows and stomach and back muscles and everything on them. But you realize, okay, it's not just me. It's my brand that's out there. So I can't go loosen up all the love nuts on their tires and hope all them joints fall off when they get on 95. I can't do that. You know. So when you call your friend and you having all these crazy thoughts, you want to you wanna do some damage to them. But you're also trying to build a brand. You, you, you're trying to progress in life. When you call your friend, do they add fuel to the fire? Like, yeah, nigga, yeah, bitch, let's, let's turn up. I bring the baseball bat. I got the Vaseline. Let's go get them. Now, mind you, depending on the severity of it, Depending on what it really is and how deep it goes, there, yeah, of course there are situations where it can get to that level. But if it's not like really life or death or harm coming to me or mine, I, you got to fight back differently. So if the friend that you're calling is adding fuel to the fire, but in the big picture, you're trying to, you're trying to be on... Boats and planes and trains and yachts and all that type of stuff in the future. 
That's what you're working towards. Your friend hyping you up in this moment could land you in a bad situation where you never even get past today. And where that friend going to be at? If it gets to the point, say you, you do something, you go to jail. They got bail money. They got lawyer money. You know. Are they actually going to be there with you while you're doing whatever they're hyping you up to do? Or do you have friends you can call and while you all hype, you all emotional. You have that friend that tries to be like the voice of reason to be like, look, you, you are absolutely justified in feeling like you're feeling. Absolutely. And I never try to take away from that. But if the goal is to live a life of luxury or a more illustrious life, a, a, a life of more abundance, to have more things, to do more things. Where does this fit in the picture? This issue you have, and yes, right now, this is a, a, a situation where if this is all you were dealing with, yeah, go slap them. <laughs> go bust all their windows out and call their mama hook. Straight like that. If that's all we're working on, we, we just hitting the clock, we ain't thinking about Tomorrow or down the line or nothing like that. We're not really working on that. We just day to day. Go kick him in the gym. Kick him right in his booty hole. But when you're working towards something much bigger, you, you got to fight differently. For instance, and don't think I'm crazy for this, but think I'm crazy for this. Like, for instance, like, depending on what degree a person has crossed me to, and it's like the little bit of petty in me. And I'm not in, I'm not condoning you to be petty like me, but be petty like me. I said, yo, I got to get enough money so I can buy their crib just to kick them out. Or buy their crib just to make them have to pay me rent. Since I can't put hands on them, I got to make it so that every day when they go to work, they know they got to pay me. Or they know I got 30 days because this nigga didn't bought my house and put me out. I ain't got to put a finger on them. But that made your life very hard. That's the way I be thinking about stuff. Like, I ain't got to never touch you. I just touch your pockets. I touch your whole lifestyle. I make you have to change your dresses. Or I make you have to put deposits into my bank account. Never had to touch you. But I touch you every day because you got to think about it. But don't be that level of petty. But what I'm saying is... I wouldn't even tell my friends that, but I just told all of y'all that. Listen to me. <clears throat> but seriously, who influences your decisions when you you hyped up, when you you ready to go off the deep end? If it's the one that's always gassing you to go further and push the gas harder on the negative side, you need to cut it. You think that's your router. Okay, that's your router. That'll be the one right in there telling, yeah, they did it. That, them, them over there, they did it. They hyping you up to do something they probably wouldn't do themselves. Or that they would do because they have they don't have nothing to lose. They don't care. Me personally, I, I, I do my best to align myself. And, and everybody got a few crazy friends. But every one of my friends is striving towards something. Whether they've been to school, whether they're um, entrepreneurs or leveling up in their job, whatever it is, they're, they're constantly striving for more. You know, they're not just satisfied with just taking it one day at a time. And if that's your, that's, if that's your lot in life, cool. But that goes back to what I said about value. I know what I want out of life. So... On a regular basis, I have to align myself with people of, of a like mindset that when we get together, I don't care like about LeBron's stats and stuff like that. More power to all the superstars and the athletes and stuff like that. But it's a shame if I know their net worth but don't know how to calculate my own. See, y'all not listening to that. I should know what um, KD's net worth is if I don't know what mine is. So I need to align myself with friends and stuff where we have those type of conversations so that, okay, I might not know, but in listening to the people I'm associated with, these are the type of conversations we have. 
we talking about um, crypto. Even our disagreements be about more so like business stuff, like just different ideologies. So at the end of the day, we really don't have to take it personal because we're not attacking each other. We're just talking about different approaches and this and that, or, or I see it like this, or I see it like that. It, it ain't never like a personal attack. And at the end of the day, we're learning from each other because we're steadily building. They get a little idea from me. I get a little piece from them. We just constantly build it. And we work, find ways to collaborate with each other so we can work together, not compete with each other. If you got friends that's jealous of you or if they're referring to your business as, oh, you still doing that little such and such, cut them off. They don't respect you if they say that. I wish one of mine would say, oh, you still doing that little podcast. That'll be the last time they talk to me. Please don't joke with me like that. A lot of times, because I crack up on Facebook, some of y'all tell random jokes when I'm and when I see you, and I'm like, what are you? Then I'd be like, oh, y'all forget. I forget stuff I post. I, I post it. I go on to something else unless it's really engaging. And I want to joke around with you. Other than that, I don't be remembering that stuff because I be here whipping up butters and I hop on for a second. I hop on like I don't be thinking about that stuff like that. So don't be weird. Let me bring it back to the friendship thing, though. The company you keep matters. Okay, I remember a young lady I was dating one time. I think she subscribed, so I'm not going to say no names. But if you see this, you're going to know I literally did tell you these words almost verbatim. You know, cool young lady. You know, we were kicking it or whatever. And at least two of the young ladies, it was more, but at least two of the young ladies that she, she hang with, and I'm not even trying to be vulgar when I'm telling the story, but this is literally the, the terminology I was using, so I'm using it now. At least two of the young ladies that she hung with were whores. And that was her, her road dog. She went out with them, drunk with them, party with them, smoked, turned up, blah, 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 on a regular. Now, she didn't per se carry herself like that in my eyes. But if I was to see her aside from me knowing her up close and personal, and I'm just seeing you with these two people. I'm going to assume you're whoring too. Because I know how they get down. I told I say, look, you getting upset with people saying this and saying that. I say, but the people you hang with are whores. I said, you know she's a whore. You used to live with her. And that's my kin folks over there. I know she's a whore. So what do you think people are going to think? when you're with them. So people say, yeah, just cause birds of a flock together, that don't mean blah, blah, blah. No, it doesn't mean you're like that. But most people won't get close enough to you to even understand that, hey, I'm the nice one. I'm the virgin of the group. Man, come on, man. When you see certain people together, whether you want to admit it or not, you kind of have a, 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 a prejudgment about who or what they might be, if you know them. You know what I'm saying? You're not the exception to the rule. So, yes, if, if you're around all people that got a little, little bread and I see you, I'm going to be like, oh, you must know something. You with the right circle or what some would say is the right circle because I know how they move. And if you're moving like that, that's impressive. On the flip side, if I see you moving with some scallywags, I'll be like, nah. Now, the whole time, you might be over there telling them about Jesus and the, the greatest gift on earth and all of that good stuff. You might be, but it don't look like it. You're not the exception to the rule. So the company you keep does matter. Stop thinking you, you jump past it. and now, Okay, now granted, I have a variety of friends. Some of the people I'm friends with if you found out I was friends with them, you probably wouldn't see it. You'd be like, I wouldn't have thought y'all were friends. But that's how life works sometimes. It ain't always what you think anyway. So I have friends in different walks of life. So I'm not staying stay here trying to knock any particular walk. But what are you walk doing within that walk? Okay, you in the streets. What type of influence do you have in the streets? Is it good or bad? 
like I said, I'm not knocking no side of life. Whether you're religious, non-religious, whatever. What type of person are you? Because I can deal with you if, if you're a solid person progressing and doing something. But you don't get a pass just because you're from this or just because you're from that. Or you don't get access just because I knew you from here or I knew you from there. What are you about right now? Because if you talk to me and ask me what I got going on, I can tell you. I can spit it right out to you. And all you tell me, shit, I don't know, you know what I'm saying? Just trying to bust a motherfucking move or something, dog. Y'all know y'all to hear stuff like that. And what am I supposed to say that? What am I supposed to say that? Like, oh yeah, I know that's right. But then what? How we building on that? How we helping elevate each other on that type of conversation? The company you keep matters. Now, I ain't going to stay up here long. Like I said, I, this is just something that was on my mind. And after a few conversations, I feel like if only one, if I get one like on this, it was worth me taking the time to do it. If I get one view on this, it was worth me taking the time to do it. Take control over you. Take control over the people you allow around you. Take control of your energy and your peace. It's yours. Nobody's going to come and bring you and say, here's some peace now. Here's some love now. Here's some caring. No, you got to do it for yourself first. And look, listen, it's a work in progress. Hopefully all of us are still working towards that and working on that. Now, I haven't yet attained that yet all the way. So I don't come to you speaking as one that thinks I'm up on a pedestal. Nah, I'm walking through this with you. I'm learning this with you. But as I learn, I teach. And as I teach, I learn. It's, it's, it's you know, it's a cycle. I definitely don't know it all. But what I do need is I need y'all to interact. If something I say in any of my videos resonates with you, I don't mind you commenting. You know, join the conversation. It might help extend the conversation. You never know. It depends on who, who you are and what you're really actually doing. It might include you in the conversation. It just depends. But I do intend to keep growing the platform. You know, it's small right now. Numbers not bothering me right now. I see the future. And you're going to look back at this and be like, you was right. So y'all subscribe. Pay attention to who you allow in your space, in your face, in your mind, on your time, all of that. Pay attention to that. Be mindful on purpose of who you allow around you. If you ain't feeling the vibe over there, don't go. If you ain't feeling that energy, don't pick up. Nobody can love you better than you. So protect your energy, yo. Anyway, I'm going to get ready to get up out of here. Hit that subscribe button. Um, I love y'all. I care about y'all. And hope you love me back. I'm a little parched again. Hold on. <clears throat> By the next episode, I should have another guest, right? And I got some good stuff lined up. I got somebody going to come in and talk about credit, um, more financial literacy, uh, more relationship things on the marriage and the single side. Just a lot of good stuff coming back up, y'all. So hit that subscribe button, tap in, tune in, get all this good game, and just go along with me for the journey. Imagine being here while I'm at 283, and then when I hit a couple of thousand, he'd be like, yo, I remember when he just had 283 subscribers. Now he doing it big. Anyway, I'll holler at y'all. One.